Hey everybody, hey wellness crew. I am so glad that you're here to join me today for some mobility. Uh, we are going to require a foam roller and a, I guess the best way to describe it would be a resistance band. <laughs> um, and if you don't have those items, then in a way you'll be able to follow along. There's gonna be some things that we do that are not going to require those objects. So we're gonna go ahead and start with foam rolling. We're gonna go ahead and lay back on our foam roller. We want it to be just below our wings, right? Our scapula. We're gonna extend our arms straight overhead and we're gonna lean back, allowing our head to fall back. We may have some pops, that is totally normal. <laughs> nice deep breaths. And I am so sorry for my voice. <laughs> I was recording my podcast, Trippin' on Wellness, and I think I overdid it a little bit. <laughs> I did a few episodes in one day. We're gonna slowly raise up those arms. We're gonna lower the foam roller to like our middle back. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna extend our arms overhead. Lean back. and just hold in this position. Go ahead and stay in that position. I am just moving to show it to you from another angle. So again, we're gonna lower back. And then slowly lifting up our arms, lifting our bodies. We're going to go ahead and get onto our knees. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the lower part of our tricep on the foam roller. We're going to bring our knees back so they are under our hips. We're going to bring our hands together. And if you want, you can even rest your forehead on the foam roller. And you're going to feel a nice stretch in your shoulders, on the upper sides of your rib cage. And yes, that's my stomach growling. <laughs> and of course, you're going to feel a stretch in your triceps.
All right, go ahead and stay in that position. I am just moving so you can see it from a different angle. We're gonna lower our hands and then lift them back up. Lower. Back up. Lower. Back up. Lower. And back up. We're going to slightly bring the foam roller a little bit closer to us so we can get um, more of the middle of our tricep. Lower. Come back up. Lower, come back up, lower, come back up, lower, and come back up. Now we're going to bring the foam roller even closer to us. So we can try to hit a higher point of our triceps. From here, you can go ahead and rest your chin on the foam roller if you can. Lower. Come back up. Lower. Come back up. Lower. Come back up. Lower and come back up. All right, bringing our hands to the mat or the floor in my case, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and roll out our quads. So we're going to place the foam roller starting like in the upper section of our quads. We're gonna go ahead, bring your heels in towards your butt and extend them straight down. Bend, extend, and then we're gonna roll a little bit. Bend, extend, Bend, extend, and we're going to roll a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go ahead, lower the foam roller to your, like the middle of your quads, your, the middle of your upper thighs. And we're going to bend. Extend. Ooh, I felt that. <laughs> oh my gosh, bend. Extend. And then we're going to roll, but we are going to make sure that we are not rolling on our knees, okay? All right, bend. Extend. Bend, extend, and roll. All right, awesome.
From here, what we're going to do is attempt to get our hamstrings. So you're going to go ahead, have your hands right. You're going to have your fingers facing away from your body. You're going to go ahead, lift up on that foam roller. You're going to turn your um, feet inwards, and then you're going to turn your feet outwards as you're rolling. And then we're going to go ahead and be right above our knees, or the back of our knees, I should say. We're going to hold. We're going to turn in and out without rolling. We're going to come to the middle. We're going to turn in and out without rolling. And then we're going to come to a couple of inches below our butt and turn in and out without rolling. Okay, now we're going to go ahead, lower the foam roller to our calves. We're going to start with our right calf. We're going to roll with our, um, basically with our toenails facing the sky, right? Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to turn that foot out just a bit at a diagonal angle towards the right. And now we're going to bring it to a diagonal angle towards the left. So middle, ooh, I got a tight spot. If you find that you have like a knot or something that's super tight, by all means, you can focus on that area and not necessarily have to follow along verbatim. <laughs> it's totally okay. We all have different areas that we need to work on. And for me personally, it's my calves. <laughs> and then inward. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead. We're going to turn our fingers to where they are facing our body. We're going to hit that left calf with our toenails facing the sky. There we go. Then having our uh, foot go and add a diagonal angle to the left. And then rolling it over to the right side at a diagonal angle. Again, coming to, I guess what the neutral position would be. <laughs> Diagonal to the left, and diagonal to the right with our foot. All right, perfect. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the foam roller, we're going to get on our right side, we're going to extend our arm straight our right arm straight out above us and we're going to be basically on our the upper part of our rib cage what we're going to do is go forward and go back forward All right, from there, we're going to bring our right arm in, having our left hand on the foam roller for stability. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead, come on to our left side. 
doing the exact same thing that we did on the right. So our left arm is extended above our uh, body. We're going to go ahead, roll forward, and roll back. And if you find that you're not at the right spot, always feel free to adjust. And I'm sorry if the microphone is picking up my hair. I apologize. And going ahead, bringing our right hand to stabilize the foam roller, bringing in our left arm. We're now going to go into <laughs> foam rolling the IT band. Now I'm going to go ahead and warn you, this can be incredibly painful, um, but as long as you're not experiencing a sharp pain, you're good, okay? It's just that our, oh my gosh, our IT bands are very tight from all the sitting that we're doing. And we're gonna start on our right leg. We're gonna go ahead, bring our left foot in front of our right leg with our left knee bent. And we're just gonna roll the outside of our thigh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I haven't done this in a minute, I'll be honest. <laughs> but you can see how tight you are, you know, especially if you are seated for a significant period of time during the day. You know, it's always a good idea if you possibly can, every hour, just get up, move around, even if it's just for five minutes. Right, you can fake a coffee break, fake a whatever break you need, bathroom break, <laughs> and just kind of walk around for like five minutes. Right here is where it's killing me. Okay. And now we're gonna go ahead and come on to our left hand side. So extending that left leg, bringing the right foot in front of our left leg with our right knee bent. Hmm, this one isn't, oh wait, yes it is. I was about to say this one isn't as bad. Whoops, jinxed myself. <laughs> And if this is something that you can incorporate into your daily life, or even just like three days a week, you will not feel <laughs> as uncomfortable as we're all probably feeling right now. All right, awesome. Okay, and that's all we have with the foam roller. We're gonna go ahead, get our band, and if you can't um, clasp your hands, if you bring your right elbow up and your left elbow you know, back, then that's what this is exactly for. It's for you to be able to still get the stretch, but just have it be modified for you. So this is what it looks like from behind. And coming into a saddle position, seated saddle. 
And when you can, try to get your hands closer and closer together. And what we're getting is the left shoulder and the right tricep and <laughs> the little riblet muscles if you were super ripped <laughs> um, that are along your um, rib cage. And slowly releasing, we're going to go ahead, shake our arms out just a little bit. We're, we're going to um, have our left arm overhead this time, our right arm under, underneath. And again, we, typically we are asymmetrical. <laughs> we just are. We uh, typically have a dominant side. So when that happens, what you're gonna notice is that when we're doing asymmetrical mobility positions, you're gonna find that one side is usually tighter than the other. You're gonna discover, you know, kind of where you have more flexibility and what areas you need to improve on. <laughs> and that will all be based on the feeling that you feel as you are doing these poses. This may also induce a few back pops, do not worry. Try to keep your chest lifted up if you can. And then trying to reach those hands closer and closer together because ideally we would have the top half of our fingers on both hands clasping each other. All right, going ahead and releasing that, shaking out our arms. We're gonna go ahead and let me move the mic. We're gonna come into a T position. What we're gonna do is start with our right arm. We're going to internally rotate it and try to bring it back behind us. If you can, almost doing a bind where you're grabbing your left hip. And going ahead, extending that right arm out again. We're gonna go ahead and get our left arm, internally rotate it, and reach back and around, trying to get into a bind with our left hand on our right hip.
we're going to go ahead and bring that left arm back to our side. We're going to go ahead and raise up our right leg with the knee bent, aiming to bring our right toe to the mat. But if you can't do that without having a shoulder lifted, then that's okay too. You're doing awesome. Bringing that right leg back to the mat. We're going to go ahead, lift up our left leg, bend our knee, and do the same thing, bringing the left, or attempting to bring the left toe to our right side but if you can't do that without keeping both of your shoulders on the mat that's okay too And bringing that left leg back to the mat. We're gonna go ahead and bring our hands in towards our chest. We're gonna lift up, or I guess more of an upward dog. Trying to bring our shoulders down and back, our chest up. If you would like, you can look with your chin. Get a nice stretch in your throat. From there, we're gonna go ahead and come into a child's pose, but we're gonna keep our knees close together and we're gonna bring our hands behind us with our palms facing the sky. Let me get the microphone. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? <laughs> if you can hear me. All right, there we go. So again, knees are closer together. Bringing our hands back, palms facing up. You can relax your forehead on the mat. And now we're going to go ahead and lift up. We're going to bring our right foot forward. But what we're going to do is we're going to put our weight onto our left knee. So try to put all your weight on your left knee. 
from there, we're going to go ahead and come to the side towards our left side. Again, you can use your hands for stability, but we really want the weight to be on the knee. And then from there, coming forward. Whatever position you need to be in with your hands in order to maintain that weight on your left knee, go ahead and do it. Because what we're trying to do is work on your hip. All right, so we're gonna come back to starting position having our weight on our left knee. We're gonna let our hips fall to the left, maintaining that weight on the left knee. And then we're gonna come forward. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and bring that right foot back. We're going to come into cat cow. So lifting the crown of our head up, lifting our bottoms up, inhaling, and lowering the crown of our head towards our mat and arching our back as we exhale. All right, come into a neutral spine. We're gonna go ahead, bring our left foot forward. Again, bringing the, our weight to our right knee. We're gonna go ahead and let our hips fall to the right hand side. And then we're going to go ahead and come forward. Returning to the starting position, making sure that our weight is on that right knee. Pushing our hips to the right hand side. And coming forward. Perfect, we're gonna come back into tabletop. So the palms of our hands are on the mat. Let me move a little bit. The palms of our hands are on the mat. Our knees are below our hips. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend our right leg or our left leg back and our right arm forward. We're gonna come around. Grab those left toes with that right hand. And releasing, bring our right arm and our left knee back to the mat. Extending that right leg back, 
extending that left arm forward, reaching around, grabbing at the toes, And I have to adjust my position a lot because my arms are literally um, too long for my body. <laughs> and releasing, bringing our right knee and our left palm back to the mat, extending the left leg and the right arm straight out in front and behind us. Wrapping around, grabbing those left toes with the right hand. Trying to raise up your knee if possible. And releasing, bringing our right palm and our left knee to the mat. Extending our left arm and our right leg out. Wrapping around. Grabbing our right toes with our left hand. And going ahead and releasing. We're going to go ahead and come into a seated saddle position again. But of course, you know what we're going to do. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead, come back onto our forearms. Now, for some people, right here is more than enough. Make sure that you're keeping your um, shoulders back and down. But if you need more of a stretch, we're going to go ahead and come all the way down to the mat. And kind of build on what we were doing with the foam rolling. We are going to have this be a longer hold. And we're going to go ahead and come back up to our forearms. Keeping those shoulders back and down. We're going to go ahead and let our chin fall back, opening up our throat.
and slowly rolling our head up, getting onto the palms of our hands to return to saddle. We're gonna go ahead and have our right arm bent. We're going to have our left wrist um, right above our right elbow for a shoulder stretch. And we're gonna go ahead and switch that up, bringing our right wrist to above our left elbow for a shoulder stretch on the left hand side. And releasing from that position, we're gonna go ahead and come into puppy dog. So having our uh, knees right below our hips, we're gonna extend our arms out. You can have your forehead on the mat, or if you're extra flexy, you can go ahead and bring your chin to the mat. All right, awesome. We're gonna go ahead. <laughs> I got makeup stains on these mats. Um, we're gonna go ahead, walk our hands in. We're going to come into a supine position. And what we're gonna do is we're going to interlace our fingers behind our right upper thigh or middle or wherever. <laughs> Flex our foot and pull. You can also use your band, having it in the arch of your foot, pulling in with your hands, And going ahead, releasing that leg, extending the right arm, the right leg nice and straight. We're gonna go ahead. Oh wow, this is tight. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and interlace our fingers behind our left thigh and pull in. 
or if you have a band, going ahead, getting it around the arch of your foot. and pulling on either end of the band. All right, we're gonna go ahead, release that leg, extend it. We're gonna come back to our right leg. Again, using either your, um, hand, your, your fingers interlaced behind your thigh or using a band. What we're gonna do is we're going to fall open to our right hand side with our right leg. Bringing the leg back to a neutral position, releasing it, going ahead and extending that right leg. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit our left leg. Bringing that leg back to center, going ahead and releasing it from the band or from your hands and extending that leg. From there, what we're gonna do is we're going to bring our hands to the small of our back, but with our palms on the mat. We're also gonna be on our forearms and our elbows. We're gonna bring our shoulders back and down as much as we can and bring our head back, tilting our chin back. So that way we can open up our throat. And this is fish position. You can point your toes if you would like. Slowly and carefully lifting up our head. Coming up into a seated position. We're gonna go ahead and extend our right leg straight forward. We're gonna bring our left foot to the outside of our right thigh. You can bend your elbow or you can keep your arm straight, whatever you prefer. You're gonna have your fingertips facing behind you. And I want you to look back behind you, whether you have a wall or whatever's behind you. Just go ahead and find a focal point. That you can go ahead and keep your eyes on.
And also simultaneously what I would like for you to do is push with the lower part of your tricep. Push your the outer part of your left thigh in towards the right side. All right, switching sides. I'm just going to switch for angle purposes. Extending our right leg. Wait, I think that's what we just did. Yeah, okay. Extending our left leg, bringing our right ankle to the outside of our left thigh. Having our palm of our right hand behind us. And having that left arm, you can, again, you can have it bent or you can have it straight on the outside of our right thigh. And if you can, finding a focal point. And pushing in with the lower part of your triceps. So that way we can kind of push that right leg and specifically the right knee area in towards the right hand side. Very good, going ahead and releasing. We're gonna go ahead and extend our legs forward, coming into, of course, one of our staples. We are gonna be in this hold for a little bit, so just letting you know. Bringing our arms up above our heads and attempting to bring our hands to our feet. However, if that's not something you can currently do, no problem. You can always grab at your ankle or at your calf. And this is such a great stretch and such an awesome staple and a wonderful pose. Because what we're doing is we're hitting the posterior of our body. Trying to remember to relax our neck, relax our head, let it just fall forward. But we're literally getting so much of the posterior of our body. We're getting our back. We're getting our hamstrings, we're getting our calves a little bit, depending on how or where your hands are placed. You're also getting a stretch in your feet, and if you want to have that be more extensive, you can always grab at your toes, grab at the balls of your feet, and pull back with your elbows slightly bent.
And if you can pull yourself in just a little bit more after a few deep breaths, by all means, please do so. We're going to go ahead, slowly roll up, releasing our hands from our feet or our ankles or our calves. We're going to go ahead, bring our right knee over our left for another one of our staples. Our um, prayer hand spinal twist. We're going to go ahead and bring our left elbow to the outside of our right thigh trying to have our prayer hands be in the middle of our chest. And going ahead, coming back into center. We're going to switch our legs. So bringing our left knee over our right. Coming into the prayer hands position, we're going to go ahead, bring that right elbow to the outside of our left thigh. Coming back into center, we're going to go ahead, release those legs. I'm going to go ahead, make a quick change up with the mats. We're going to come into a supine position, so on our back. We're going to go ahead, we're going to grab our toe, our big toe with our pointer and middle finger. And then our thumb is going to be kind of like on the inside of the ball of our foot. What we're going to do is try to pull our knees in either towards our armpits or pull them out just a little bit. Okay. Trying to keep our back in contact with the mat the entire time. You can do it. And if your fingers start to get loose from your big toe, it's totally natural. It happens to everybody. Just go ahead and readjust, grab onto that big toe, and continue to pull in.
releasing those feet, going ahead and extending our legs out, having our palms facing the sky, coming into Shavasana. I am so proud of you for sticking through this um, session. Mobility is definitely not always something that's comfortable or easy, but it's something that's incredibly important for your overall you know, ability to do even the most simple of movements or to do compound movements um, for flexibility. You know, it just makes your life easier. And you should definitely express gratitude to yourself and to your body for its ability to do the poses and use the equipment that we use today. I highly suggest getting a foam roller as soon as you can if you don't have one. Getting a band if you don't have one. Getting a lacrosse ball if you don't have one. Someone stole mine, <laughs> so I have, to, I have to get a new one. And then with our palms up, we are being and putting ourselves into a receptive position for our higher power and the universe to present us with whatever it is that it wants to present us with. And having gratitude toward your higher power and the universe. Bringing awareness to your breath and your body. Seeing if you feel any difference, any change, any more relaxed, any looser. And we're going to go ahead and extend our right arm to the right hand side. We're going to bring our feet to the mat with our knees bent. We're going to roll to our side where our arm is extended. And we're going to come up into a either seated or a kneeling position. I am so honored that you joined me for today's practice. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and also definitely consider joining one of the membership tiers. It is popping off in there. <laughs> and also feel free to check out my podcast on Spotify. It's called Trippin, so T-R-I-P-P-I-N <laughs> on wellness. And outside of that, I will see you on the next video as well. <clears throat> so I have a few goals um, for being able to create higher quality content, but I do need your help. So below there's a thanks button. If you would consider going ahead and, you know, participating in that, just so that way you can help me with, you know, improving the quality of the videos hopefully maybe even being able to get a studio space. We'll see. Um, but that's dependent on 
y'all support. So if you could do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Every bit helps. Thank you so much. Be well. Stay wild.